Today we're going to be doing a trip plan to plan a trip from Palm Beach, Florida up to Newport, Rhode Island, which is somewhere up in here. So we're going to go through the steps that we go through to plan this trip. What we're going to do is go through some of our cruising guides and just get some information on our destination, which is going to be Newport, Rhode Island. These are the cruising guides that we have on board that pertain to the Atlantic coast and the area where we're going. And although these are old cruising guides, uh, we certainly won't use them for navigation, but they will give us some information. So I'm going to use this guide to the New England coast and get some information about Newport. When I open up my guide, I get an overview map and I can see Newport should be in section 38, so I go there. When I turn to the page about Newport, it's got a nice little chart showing the, the harbor, and then it's got a lot of information about what we can expect to find in Newport. Here's the section I'm most interested in, which is about navigation and anchorages. And this is going to give me everything I need to know about where we're going to anchor when we get to Newport. And from the description of the anchorages, it looks like down here in Renton Cove is a likely spot for us to look to anchor. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, sort of a rough cut of a route. Uh, this won't be the actual route we use, but this will be the first step in my planning process. So I'm going to come over here uh, in Noble Tech Trident, which I use for my route planning, and I'm going to click on Route, and that's going to give me my route tool. And I come over here and I'm going to start my route here somewhere around Palm Beach. And right now I'm just trying to get sort of a feel for how far this is going to be. So I'm just going to draw kind of a straightish line up here, and I'm going to keep going up the coast here, and I'm aiming for Rhode Island, which is probably somewhere in here. And as I get closer, I can zoom the chart in so I get a little bit better definition. Okay, so I'm going to go in roughly into here somewhere. And let's just do that for grins. Now, what this allows me to do is to get an approximate um, length of our route. So I can just come over here now and click on it, and it tells me that's 984 miles. So, you know, that's going to be roughly a five-day trip for us. At least I know that much now. My next step is going to be to refine this route a little bit. Now one of the things I find a little difficult is that as I get up here towards our destination and I start zooming in, uh, sometimes I sort of lose track of where we're going. So one of the things I like to do is to put a mark on the destination. So what I'm going to do is try to find Newport. And look, here it is, right here, Newport, Rhode Island. And Brenton Cove, that's kind of where we said we might think about anchoring. So what I'm going to do is just put a little mark here, which I can do with uh, my routing software. I can create a mark. I can make that mark uh, a certain symbol. I'm going to give it a star, because that's where we're going. So, um, and I can name the mark. I can say, uh, I can make the, the mark say, Newport. So if I click on it again, I'll know why I created that mark. Now notice, as I shrink the chart down, my mark stays there, so it's easy for me to see, regardless of the scale of my, my chart, that that is in fact where we're going. Since we're going to be heading north up the coast, one of the things we are interested in is the location of the Gulf Stream, which is a uh, warm, water, warm water current that flows northward. So we want to ride the Gulf Stream up. That will help us with our speed and with our fuel consumption. So we'd like to be in that Gulf Stream. This is from the uh, NOAA site, the NOAA government site, and this is a um, chart of sea surface temperature with the approximate Gulf Stream charted in here. And what we can see is there are some uh, coordinates here that I can use to approximate where the Gulf Stream is. 
I can also get information about the location of the Gulf Stream in areas of Florida from some of our weather forecasting tools. And here we can see various uh, points in Florida with the location of the west wall of the Gulf Stream. So I'm going to plot a couple of points here to sort of give me a guideline as to where the Gulf Stream is. Uh, I know from our weather forecasting software that it is 30 miles, the west wall is 30 miles east of Cape Canaveral. So here's Cape Canaveral. What I'm going to do is just draw a little line that extends about 30 miles out, which would be to about here. So approximately there is where the Gulf Stream is uh, starts. Um, in Cape Canaveral. Now that we also know the Gulf Stream is probably 40 to 50 or 60 miles wide. So if I assume it starts there, I can draw another line that goes out about, oh, let's say 40 miles, right to about there. So the Gulf Stream should roughly be somewhere in between these two points. So what I'm going to do is put a little point here. I'm going to create a mark. So I'm going to say create a mark. And I'm going to give it some sort of a unique symbol to identify it as being the Gulf Stream. I'm just going to use this one for argument's sake. So that's going to tell me where the Gulf Stream is at this location. I can then go up to Ponce Inlet, which is another area where I know it's north of um, Cape Canaveral. Here it is, Ponce Inlet. And I know that the Gulf Stream is supposed to be approximately 40 miles east of Ponce Inlet. So if I start here and I draw a line that extends 40 miles east, There's another marker, and I can create a mark here, and uh, make that the symbol I've picked to denote the Gulf Stream. Then I now have sort of two little locations. Notice it's starting to curve a little bit. Okay, I've now plotted several points which give us an indication of where the Gulf Stream is. And as you can see, the direct straight line route, uh, which may take us there a little bit, uh, with a little bit less distance, um, we won't be going as fast. So we're going to try and look at an alternate route that will take us in the jet stream up the coast and see how much that costs us in distance. I plotted, plotted an alternate route that puts us closer to the Gulf Stream. This was my original route when I didn't know where the Gulf Stream was. Uh, it was um, 989 miles. This route, which keeps us a little bit closer to the coast, uh, is really not that much different. It um, looks like it's 991 miles. So it's about the same amount of distance, but pursuing this route instead of this one will probably save us a good bit of time. So to avoid any clutter right now, I'm just going to delete this route because we're not going to actually be using that one. Ah! I just deleted the wrong route. Okay, fortunately, I have an undo button, a new feature of Noble Tech that I love, so I can put my route back. And I can click on this route, and let's see if I can delete the right one. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and name this route so that we know what it is. And to do that I've got to right click on it and I can rename the route and I'm going to call it Palm Beach to Newport. So I'll save it now and now that route is forever there. So for now, I was really only concerned with the offshore portion of this trip. Um, we are actually up here in Old Port Cove Marina. And as you can see, we've been out, in and out of this marina a number of times, and we have some track lines 
which we can follow. Um, it's a fairly narrow and not really deep channel, so we'll be uh, following those track lines out. Now, one of the things we do have to be concerned with, though, is tides. Uh, we cannot get in and out of this uh, marina in, in, at low tide, so we're going to have to sort of figure out uh, when, we when we plan to depart and how we're going to time it so that we can get out on a rising or at least a half tide. We do not want to go out at uh, low tide here. So one of the tools that we have in Noble Tech is the ability to get a tide graph. So I can right click, it allows me to open a tide graph, and this will show us the tide by day. Now we're planning a departure date of uh, approximately June 1st or 2nd. So if I scroll over to there, and I get past, okay, here is Saturday, June 1st. And we can see the uh, high tide is around 4 in the morning and again around 4.30 in the afternoon it looks like. So in fact it's uh, 4.15 p.m. is a high and it's a uh, plus 0.8 meter high. Uh, low tide is at 10.30 a.m. and 11.15 p.m. So that gives us some information about uh, our options for departing the marina. Uh, we don't know yet whether we're going to uh, depart the marina and immediately head offshore or whether we'll depart the marina and anchor out for a night prior to heading out offshore. Now if I come over to my route and I double click on it, it brings up the route detail. And what this does is allow me to um, do a little more planning in terms of departure and arrival times. Uh, what it does allow me to do is set an estimated speed or an average speed of all our legs, which I'm going to put in here as seven and a half knots because that's a, a good average cruising speed for us. Um, at times we might go a little faster, at times we might go a little slower, um, but that's a good speed for planning purposes. What this then allows me to do is go down and see exactly how long this trip will take. So according to this, at an average speed of seven and a half knots, it will take us five days and 12 hours, five and a half days, um, to reach Newport. Okay, one last thing that I want to do with this offshore route is just blow it up to a scale where I can look and see any potential hazards that might be in our way, uh, particularly as we're exiting or as we're beginning our route, I want to make sure we don't have any markers in our way uh, and that we're in deep water all the way. So here the water is plenty deep. And you can see as we go up our route, it still looks good. We're in deep water. Nothing of any concern along the route. And so I'm just going to do this fairly quickly here, but we'll look at this route in much greater detail. And again, this route we'll use as more of a guideline. Uh, we may or may not use it. We will probably adjust it along the way. And um, it's just uh, really a guideline we'll use more than anything as a guideline. Okay, so as we start to get up here past Cape Hatteras, you can see there's some markers there, but they're not in our path, so we're safe. Here's a marker here. We may want to move a little further away from that, so that it's, uh, we don't know what it is. We can actually see what that is. It's a special mark of some kind. It's a recording mark, special purpose mark. And then, of course, as we get up into here, we'll want to make sure that we are clear of any marks and reasonably in good position. So that looks good. It looks like we have a reasonable offshore route. We know how long it's going to take us. And we can use the tools available to determine the best departure time uh, to get us there at a safe hour of the day.